Shalom. Prophesying to the Wheel Reloaded will be with you live on AM 1370 WLTH Radio every other Sunday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you there. All right, so move, moving along with the show, we're going to continue d addressing some of the problems. I want you to read that on page 15 that's highlighted. The Willie Lynch letter, page 15. When it comes to breaking the uncivilized nigger, use the same process, but vary, but vary the degree and step up the pressure so as to do a complete reversal of the mind. So... Notice it said do it to do a complete reversal of the mind. It says step up the pressure. I mean step up the pain. Basically, basically, this is talking about going into torture. We were tortured to reverse the process. And remember when we read before, right before the break, remember we, we what we read was the, the focus was more so on breaking down the mind of our women. Because this is the natural. Let's get 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and 1. Because what we got to understand. Like we read, like we read at the beginning, the Bible is profitable for instruction and in righteousness. So we got to look in the Bible to see how's the how's the family structure supposed to be set up. How are we supposed to be moving with it when it comes to female and male relations? Because this is a problem that's in the black community, a very big problem, a huge problem. Because there's a lot of single parent homes, and our sisters, and and it's not just the fault of the sisters. It's not just the fault of the brothers. It's collective, and it's and, and it's a result of the, the captivity that we've been in. But you got a single parent parent households. You got men that don't know how to be fathers and do everything. Those are problems within our community. Read that real quick. First Corinthians chapter eleven verse one: Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So this is the apostle Paul writing. He said, be followers of me, even as also I am of Christ. So follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I'm following the commandments. If I'm, as I'm keeping the commandments, follow after the things that I'm doing. Read. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinance as I deliver them to you. Uh -huh. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, uh -huh. and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So this is the divine order that the Most High God set up. It's the Most High God, Christ. Christ answers to the Most High God. The man answers to Christ. And the woman answers to the man. And that's not, that's not male chauvinism. That's order. That's order and structure. And then the, the woman deals with the children. Go back to the Willie Lynch. Because that, that's the order that we are... That we that's established in the household that's supposed to be established, but best believe our our enemies that had us in slavery, they knew that we had that family structure. And the Willie Lynch, what we read in the Willie Lynch letter, we read we reading right now them breaking down that family structure and reversing it, turning the course of it. Read, but vary the degree and step up the pressure so as to do a complete reversal of the mind. Uh huh. Take the, take the meanest and most restless nigger, strip him of his clothes in front of the remaining male niggers, the female and the nigger infant. So this is the, what, you, what, we, what we call this what? The, um, the alpha male. The, the, what they, they, they use, ain't that the term they use? Mm -hmm. alpha, male. Yeah, the alpha male. This is the male that he going, this the leader. He going to rise up like, nah, I ain't having that. You ain't finna, you ain't finna come take my family. This is the one that's going to stand up for the nation. He's going to stand up for his people. They say, no, nah, take him because he's the strongest. Everybody following him. They observed us. They studied us. Remember, that's the, they, they took crafty counsel. They took the strongest one. They find who the leader is. They pull that leader out, and this is what they do to him. Read. Tar and feather him. Tie each leg to a different horse faced in opposite directions. Set him, a, set him a fire and beat both horses to pull him apart in front of the remaining niggers. So they they tied them. They look just just and, and just picture that. Imagine that. Tied them up by the leg to two horses going in opposite directions. Lit them on fire and then hit the horses so they run in different directions. They split the strongest male in half. Meaning they they they. This is psychology. 
they broke broke down our psyche. So now we see we see our leader get ripped in half. We like, then I mean, what's this gonna cause? Anybody that was following him, that was gonna be the next leader, they gonna shrink back. Like they gonna shrink back out of fear. Like damn, I don't want that to happen to me. And then the woman gonna see it, and she like, man, I don't want that to happen to my children. I don't want that to happen to my sons. Read. The next step is to take a bull whip and beat the remaining nigger male to the point of death in front of the female and the infant. Don't kill him, but put the fear of God in him. Put the fear of the white man in him. That's your white Jesus. That's what this is. That's what it's saying. Because we this ain't the fear of God. The fear of God is in the Bible. The fear of God is you keeping the commandments. This is no, put the fear of the white man in him. Because now. They did that. They beat him to the point of death. He, they beat him down till he weak and can't. And we seen this in uh when you see Roots with Kunta Kunta Kente. They beat him to the point. They beat him. They beat him. They beat him. He wouldn't say the name they wanted to give him. He kept saying his name Kunta Kente. But then they beat him down until he broke. Mm -hmm. They broke his spirit. They broke his 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 strong mind. That's what that's what happened to us. And this was the starting process of this. Let's go to Jeremiah thirty one. 31 and 22. Because these, this is the thing that this is something that's prevalent, pre very prevalent in our community. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 2. 22. 22. Verse 22. How long would thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. Now I want to point it out real quick. So it said, Now how long would thou go, O backsliding daughter? Remember what we what we addressed in Deuteronomy 28. A lot of these these things, these things happen. I'm gonna say a lot of these things. All of these evils that happen to us is because we broke God's commandments. That's black. That's backsliding. We went away from the, the words of God. We stopped keeping His commandments, and that's why we in the conditions that we are in today. That's why these things happen to us during slavery. Read. For the Lord have created a new thing in the earth. It said the Lord have created a new thing in the earth. Remember that the Lord have created. Remember He is our Father. He is the nation of Israel's father, and he's disciplining us. That's why he say he created a new thing. So these things that we read in the Willie List letter, the Most High God authorized that because we broke his commandments. That's our discipline. Read. A woman shall compass a man. A woman shall compass a man. The women are the CEOs and different things like that. The women are leading the households nowadays. And, and that's it's not every single household, but the majority of our nation, the women are calling the shots in the house. That's how you got your big mama. That's how you got your big mama. We trust in big mama to give us direction. No, it's not supposed to be like that. The woman should come past a man. So let's read it again. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 22. How long would thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord have created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall come past a man. So the woman is going to be the one that's leading the pack, so to say. Because that's what happened with to us in slavery. Go to Second Ezra chapter five and verse eight. Second Ezra chapter five and verse eight. If any of you have 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 never heard, anybody listen, never heard of the apocryphal, or if you heard of the apocrypha and have the thought that it's not a part of the Bible, it's very much so a part of the Bible. It was taken out in the uh, late 1700s by the Protestant Church because it actually it connects the dots between the Old Testament and the New Testament, and it also has more history. Within it, we'll read that. Second Ezra chapter five verse eight. That shall be a confusion also in many places. So it says it's gonna be a confusion in many places. What's that confusion? What's the confusion that's gonna be in many places? Read. And the fire shall be offset out again. Mm -hmm. And wild beasts shall change their places, and mistress women shall bring forth monsters. So this is a confusion. It says mistress women shall bring forth monsters. I mean, it's going to be a lot of, this is going into the fact that it's a lot of single parent households and these women that's raising men, they don't, a woman cannot teach a man how to be a man. All a man is going to learn, all a man is going to learn as he grow up from his mother is emotions. He's going to learn how to be emotional. That's why I call, that's why I call, that's why I says, that's why I says, she'll bring forth monsters because that's why a lot of the shootings, when you look at them, when you examine it, a lot of the shootings are happening by young men. Father. Some of them young men with no fathers. When you actually look at it, they have no father. They had no father figure that showed them how to be a man. They was raised by their mother, 
So all they picked up was emotionalism. Not saying that men never get have emotion, but men know how to learn, know how to control and direct their emotion, they emotion to where they stay, stand on a principle. Mm -hmm. Women don't have that strength. Not saying that the women don't have the strength to stand on a principle, but women are more emotional. And that when they raise children, when they raise their sons and their children, their children gonna raise them, gonna grow up and be the men. The young men are gonna grow up to be emotional, and they are gonna turn into monsters when they get of age. They are gonna be shooting and robbing, and killing everybody. Want to want to fight everybody. Right. Unruly, disobedient, don't want to listen to nobody. Willful, stubborn, don't want to don't want to listen to nothing. That's what this is talking about. Go to Isaiah three and twelve. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, and verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppression. What do we see going on in the black community? Mm -hmm. The children terrorize. These, these young men that's 20, 21, 22, even 16, 17, they are terrorizing our community. They robbing the, the elders. They, they terrorize. They are, are oppressors. They are oppressing us. Our children are oppressing us. Read and women rule over them. And women rule over them. Mm -hmm. Big ma. Single parent households. The women are leading the way. And then what's what are men at? On the streets or in jail? Or dead. Because we they, they when we read in the Lim Woody Lynch letter, they broke us. They broke the family structure down. Where the women they broke the they broke the women down where the woman don't even want to depend on the man. The woman wanna depend on the government. She don't want to. She don't want a man to be in. That. She wants. She don't want the, the. She want the man out the house so she can continue to reap the benefits of Section Eight. So she can continue to reap the benefits of uh, the the uh, uh, what is called the man slipping wick, the, the uh, food stamps, oh, okay. welfare and system, women, infant, and children. Right, she like no, nah, no. Nah. You you stay over there. Stay with your mother so I can keep depending on the government. Right. Keep depending on the white man because that's what they did. We read that in the Willie Lynch letter. Read. Oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to earth, and destroy the way of thy paths. So our paths are destroyed. We are far from the commandments. We are far from what we're supposed to be. we far from our divine order. The, why the Most High God set us on this earth? Because we've been broken through slavery. What you wanted to bring out? Uh, I want to uh, add on to the point where the mothers are raising the, the, the sons and also the daughters. Because, like you say, you know, the when the women are, are doesn't have that hedge of protection of the man being in the household to help guide her to raise the children properly according to the Bible, then you have the women that are raising their sons to be emotional women, emotional daughters. So the son is essentially is like a daughter. Give me that in um Ezekiel 16, uh, verse 44. And then I'm gonna have a solution to that problem. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 44. Uh -huh. Behold. Every one that uses proverbs shall use this proverb against thee. Now remember, a proverb is a curse because that is something that is a wise saying outside of the greatness that God designed you to be. Because of the sin that we are in, because of us breaking God's household rules, his manufacturing um, document on how we're supposed to operate on this earth. Now we are becoming a proverb and this is the proverb read. Same as is the mother so is the daughter. So as the mother is broken from her state of being connected with her man, as the man is being connected with God and keeping these laws, now she is what? She is teaching this young man how to be an emotional, irrational young man. As soon as someone step on the gym shoes, he's ready to shoot up the place. He's, he's gummed up with drugs, listening to rap music, talking about drill, kill, kill, kill. I'm going to spin the block. <coughs> Our young men are out here, you got 12 or 13 year olds that are out here killing, killing each other. Literally, you can find a, a 12 or 13 year old can find a gun before you can find a book that's going to tell him, hey, stop killing one another. So, so how can the women change this mindset? Here's a solution. Give me Titus chapter 2. <clears throat> so what the, 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 the whole idea of why we're on this topic of identity crisis because our people, we are rolling in a circle of self-hate. We don't know who we are. So we're trying to put that back, yeah, based off the history. The history, it is hard. It is a scary thing. But we have to put that back in our mindset so that, you know what? 
we can see exactly what's going on with us, and then we can start fixing ourselves inside out. So give me that in Titus chapter 2, verse 3. The book of Titus chapter 2, verse 3. So this is what the woman is supposed to be doing today. Read. The aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. So the woman is supposed to be having a mindset to become a holiness, meaning you are acting out holiness, everything that you do, whether it's taking care of the household, providing, uh, help, helping to be a help me to your husband, and providing for your children. Read on. Not false accusers. Not false accusers, because I want to have a, have a problem with being false accusers, being lying. You could just look at the court systems and see that. Some of the women, when 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 they when they're young and they're messing with men that they shouldn't be at the at an older age, what they're saying that they raped me. Mm -hmm. You have some women that are putting men on child support, falsely accusing them. Mm -hmm. So these things are happening because we are we are fell away from what God has said to how we're supposed to be operating. Read on. Not giving too much wine. Not giving too much wine. Not being drunkards. Read. Teachers of good things. We, the women are supposed to be teaching the kids. Thus saith the Lord. Those are the good things. Read on. Verse 4, that they may teach the younger women to be sober. So now that the woman has got her mind right, now what? Is each one teach one now? Now the women that are, are operating out of the Bible, now they're able to help the other women in their families, the other women in their communities, to, so she could duplicate herself being a wise woman, thus says the Lord. Read on. To love their husbands. To love their husbands. See? So now it's not the woman that doesn't have a husband. It's now a woman that does have a woman, uh, a, a, a husband, according to the, what the Bible says. Because he can't just be just a regular old Negro on the street. He has to be cleaned up in, the, in, the, in his mindset, has to be cleaned up in the, in the Bible. So now he, she has a husband and, she, and she's learning how to love her husband. Read on. To love their children. To learn how to love her children. Because right now... Our, unfortunately, our, our, our mothers that are raising these young sons and these young daughters without a head to protect in the household, she don't really know how to love her children. And it's evident. All you got to do is, is turn on the uh, Channel 7 News. That's all you have to do. Read the newspaper, and you'll see that the black-on-black -black crime is created by these children that have no father in the household. Read on. To be discreet. Uh-huh. So we have to teach our women to be discreet. Chase. Chase. Keepers at home. Keepers at home, meaning taking care of the children, providing the right, the proper substance to help them grow up to be uh, livable citizens within the society. Teach them how to, you know what, do uh, how to keep their room clean, how to do their homework, how to how to set goals, things of that nature, how to have a work ethic. Those are the things that the women are supposed to be teaching these young children, but they're not. They teach them how to drill, how to smoke weed, how to kill, 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 murder, murder, murder. Read on. Good. Uh -huh. Obedient to their own husbands. We have to teach the women how to be obedient to the husband. Once the husband uh, is repented, keeping these laws, we don't. That the word of God be not blasphemed. And then we get to know what we get to be that example of the way God has showed us. So God is not blasphemed now. That's that's all I want to add, officer. So remember, you are listening to Prophesying to the Wind Reloaded on WLTH Radio, thirteen seventy AM. Remember to call in with any questions or comments that you may have, 219-885-1371. And also, I want to put in there, we are Israel United in Christ. We, are, we have a school located on the west side of Chicago at 4339 West Division Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60651. You can reach us directly at 855-484-4842 or extension 712 if you want to call and have any any questions that you may have you can call us directly outside of the radio show so we're going to continue on in the uh the willie lynch letter and then we're going to go into some solutions to these problems that we brought out because we, we are coming close to the end of the radio show so we're going to read this last little portion of dealing with some of the issues what we just read in those uh scriptures dealing with the the breaking process of our households read that the willie lynch letter page 17 the breaking process of the African woman. Take the female and run a series of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desires willingly. Take her in every way because she is the most important factor for good economics. If she shows any signs of resistance in submitting completely to your will, do not hesitate to use the bull whip on her to extract that to extract that last little bitch out of her. Take care not to kill her, but in doing so, you spoil good economics. When in complete submission, 
she will re she will train her offspring in the early years to submit to your labor when they become of age. So this is this is the process. We'll go to the next page. We're gonna read through that. But this is the this is what happened to our women, our sisters, and this is shown. I can't think of the name of the, the Tyler Perry movie right now, but it was the Tyler Perry movie where the the uh, woman, <clears throat> the, the the brother was trying to start a construction company, and his wife she had she was a she was working for the uh, they was working for the same company I believe, and she was like a she was she was sleeping with the boss basically, and her, her child was the boss's child. Family a family that prays. This is this is what you seen in that movie because when he. Took the, he took money to start his own, to build up his own construction business. She got mad at him and slapped him and told him he wasn't nothing. That's what happened to our women. Our women was never like that. Our women always supported us when we, when we, when we did. When we were doing good, we were trying to build up our family. Our women supported us, but this is what happened to us. Read. This breaking of the female nigger will have reversed the relationships. In her natural uncivilized state, she will have a strong dependency on the uncivilized nigger male. So notice, they said that this was our uncivilized state. No, this was, this was according to the Bible, this was our civilized state. This is how we're supposed to be. The woman's supposed to be dependent on the man for direction, for, for protection, for all of those things. Right. That's the natural order. Read. And she will have a limited protective dependency towards her independent male offspring and will raise female offspring to be dependent like her. Uh -huh. Nature had provide nature had provide for this type of balance. We reverse nature by burning and pulling one civilized nigger apart and bull whipping the other to the point of death, all in her presence. By her being left alone, unprotected, with the male image destroyed. So they they put this is where go go back to what we read earlier in the letter. This that distrust, because now they they did like they they broke down the man in front of the woman. So now she's looking like you can't protect me. I gotta hey, I gotta do it myself. I gotta be an independent woman. I gotta be an alpha woman, whatever they say. Right. That's what happened to us. They broke down the image of the man. So now the woman don't even trust the man to be a man. To be a protector. To be a protector, because it's like hey, you you couldn't protect yourself when they was beating you. They they the psych this the psychological trouble we we didn't read I don't think we we didn't read the scripture today but in Deuteronomy twenty eight and twenty eight it says we we should be mad for the sight of our eyes thine eyes for the things that we see I'm I'm butchering it up but I don't for time's sake I can't go there but that's what they did we are psychologically damaged right now we psychologically damaged and the Bible is our solution to correct that psychological damage. Uh, read on. Read. How much left? How much on left? Not that much. Read on. The ordeal caused her to move from her psychological dependent state to a frozen independent state. In this frozen psychological state of independency, she will raise her male and female offspring in reverse roles. For fear of the young male's life, she will psychologically train him to be mentally weak and dependent. Mentally weak and dependent. But physically strong. So, so this is what happened. This is why our young men are emotional, weak-minded, don't have no fortitude, don't can't stand their ground because they are raised by single women, and a lot of our sisters. And this ain't no no attack on no mothers and nothing like that because we know we know in the state that we in, our mothers do the best that they can, and what they with what they given. We so we not bashing women. We not bashing our women. Don't get it twisted. Don't don't twist it up like that. We are not bashing our women. We we showing what happened to our households and what happened to our women. What happened to our our men? We've been broke down in slavery. So that's these are the problems that plague our community. So if we correct that, men raise back up. Go take take care of your children. Apply the commandments. Rise back up. Be that protector. Because when you do that, that's that's one step of getting our nation back in order. That's one step of us taking our communities back and minimizing the violence, minimizing the guns, minimizing the shooting, the gang banging. That's how we do it. We have to return to our natural order. 
we have to return to the natural order. Let's get Acts chapter 3 and 19. Because we want to get some solutions. We want to show you what are the, okay, you may look at it. Oh, that's, they teaching, they teaching doom and gloom. They going all off. We, we see this every day. We don't want to hear that. Okay, what's the purpose? We, see, we show these things so you can see how our history, the things that happen to us, directly correlate to the Bible. So now we're going to show you the solutions to these problems. Give me Acts chapter 3 and 19. The book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. So it says repent ye therefore and be converted. So feel the things that you, you if you have been in the midst of adultery, fornication, no, those are things that go against God's laws. Mm -hmm. You have done wickedly. We're supposed to feel remorse for those things. We're supposed to, we're supposed to feel bad. We're supposed to feel bad. That's, what, that's the starting point of repentance. You feel bad for those things and you turn away from it. Stop doing it. And it says be converted. How are we converted? Let's get that in Acts chapter 19 and 7. I mean, Psalms 19 and 7, my bad. The book of Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So the law of the Lord converts our soul. The law of the Lord is perfect. So for us to correct, we feel we see what we done, we see where we fallen short and done wrong. For us to correct it, we gotta go to the God's laws. We gotta read the, we gotta you gotta read the Bible and apply it. Read to apply. Study to apply. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. It is not, it's incomparable. So the glory is gonna be far greater than this suffering that we see today. So it's not, we're not teaching doom and gloom. We're showing you the things that's going on, how it correlates to the Bible so that you can repent, so that you can see, so you can be a witness of the glory that we're going to see when, when Christ come back right. and restore us and return the kingdom to us. Read that in Revelation 21. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. 1, start at 1. Verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. So this is just talking about the, the kingdom. The, the, the new heaven and the new earth is talking about the kingdom of God being brought back into order, instructed, brought back, brought back into the earth how it's supposed to be. And that kingdom of the kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of Israel, the kingdom of the blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans. When we get our kingdom, that's the glory and the joy of keeping the commandments, of coming out of those lifestyles. Read. And there are no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Prepare as a bride adorned for her husband. So this is beautiful. If anybody, if you ever, if you ever witnessed the marriage, you ever went to a wedding, you see how the, the, the husband waiting up there, his wife is coming up the line. She she got the the white robe, whatever, whatever, whatever she got on. That, but she looked glorious. She looked beautiful. That's how it is when when the kingdom comes. That's what we have hope. That's what we got to look for. That's what we hoping for. Read it. Verse three. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold. The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God shall be with, and God shall be with them and be their God. Read. And God shall wipe away all their tears from their eyes. He said, He's gonna wipe all our tears from our eyes. So all the suffering and the pain that we see today is gonna be wiped from our eyes. The 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 seeing your seeing a two-year-old get shot by a straight bullet. That's going to end. There's going to be no more tears in our eyes. We're going to be restored. That's joyful. Something to look forward. That's something to look forward to. We ain't going to see all this pain. We ain't going to see walk, run through, drive through a city and it's all abandoned houses everywhere. I, I, I older men strung out on drugs, crackheads. We're not going to see these things no more. Read. And there shall be no more death. And it's going to be no more death. No more death. That's a joy to see. If you, if if, if you're listening, that's a joy to see. That's, a, that's the joy in keeping the commandments and returning to your heritage as an Israelite and keeping God's laws because you have a hope. You got a hope for receiving the kingdom that's going to be far greater than all these kingdoms that are on earth right now that we see. Read. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. The things that we see today are going to pass away. They're going to be gone. We're going to have joy. Now jump up to 12. Revelations chapter 21, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And there was a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Notice that. This is the kingdom that we're looking forward to because right now we at the bottom. Excuse me. 
Now, right now, we at the bottom. All we see is death. All we see is doom. All we see is gloom. But when we get the kingdom, it says there's 12 gates, 12 angels, and they have the names of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That lets you know the kingdom, the rulership is for the Israelites, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's, right. That's something to be glory, glory to, to glory in and be happy about. Right. That's praiseworthy. That's the joy of all of the stuff that we brought out that you may look at. Oh, they teaching doom and gloom. We brought, out, we brought all that out so you can recognize that you are the Israelites. And this is your reward if you repent and keep God's commandments. That's right. That you're going to be given the kingdom. Bring and it's it going to be the kingdom and it's just going to be us ruling that kingdom. Right. That's right. Read. Verse 13. And on, the, and on the east three gates and on the north three gates and on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. Jump to verse 18. Verse 18. And the building of the wall of it was as of jasper. And the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. Man, we do this. I'm not gonna be able to read all of it for time's sake, but when you get a chance, read Revelation 21, 18 on down. This our kingdom is gonna be gonna be beautiful. We can't even imagine how beautiful it's gonna be. Read verse um, what is that? 21. Read verse 21. Verse 21. Because this is what we got to hope for. This is the benefit of you keeping the commandments. Yes, yeah, it's, it's hard today. Yeah, we got hard times. All we see is death, doom, and gloom. But this is what we got to look forward to when we repent and keep God's commandments. We return to our heritage. Read that. And the 12 gates were of 12 pearls. Uh -huh. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold. The street of the city was pure gold. No more potholes when you're going through the street of the city. You ain't hitting potholes. The streets of the city were pure gold. And what's the, how that pure gold look? As it were transparent glass. As it were transparent glass. We right. can't even imagine that because we ain't never seen nothing like that. Bring it out. That's glorious. That's glorious for us. So we have, we have, we have been on we, our goal. Remember, our goal is to teach, to change the hearts and minds of our people, teaching the gospel of repentance from sin to our people that are scattered around the world as a result of the disobedience to God's commandments. Right. Because we suffer, right now we suffer from a wide range of issues, self-hatred, domestic violence, mass incarceration, economic exploitation. But we, well, we, as we have shown you, the Bible got the solution to our problem. Bring it up. The Bible is the, the Bible is our roadmap to get out of this captivity. The Bible is our roadmap to change the course of the negative nature that we have seen and heard all our lives right remember this is prophesying to the wind reloaded we are on wlth radio show 1370 a.m remember we are located we are israel united in christ we are located in chicago the west side of chicago 4339 west division street chicago illinois 60651 you can call us directly at 855-484 4842 extension 712 we hope that you were edified with, the, with what we brought out in this show and we look forward to hearing for any of you who have been listening in and never heard this information and we have reached you shalom most high in christ bless most high in christ bless Israel. we used to scream black power while heron was pushed but at the end of the day nothing's in vain IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.